Hello guys, today we are going to talk about the gingivitis. So it's the inflammation of gingiva. So gingivitis means, gingiva means the gums and itis usually refers to the inflammation. So that's the gingivitis. So let's start with the definitions and the terms. So gingivitis, it is the inflammation of gums that are around the teeth in which gums are red swollen and bleeding so that's the definition of gingivitis there is an inflammation of gums around the teeth and the gums they are red because of increase in blood capillaries and also they are swollen and there's a tendency of bleeding so even when you brush slightly there's a high chance of bleeding so that's the definition of gingivitis so what are the causes of gingivitis well there are a lot of etiological factors that can cause gingivitis here are the main one that leads to gingivitis so the first one is microorganism well our oral cavity is full of normal oral flora and sometimes when our immunity is compromised or when our oral health is poor then these organisms increase in number and leads to oral health problem so the main organism that contribute to the gingivitis are Trepanoma denticola, Actinobacillus, Porphyromonas gingivalis. Next one is Calculus. Well, Calculus, it provides suitable environment for such bacteria to grow and multiply, and it may lead to oral health problems. Next one is the food impaction and neglect. So, we eat different kinds of food throughout the day, such as candy, bar, chocolate, sticky food, and when they remain sticky on our tooth for a longer period of time, then they provide suitable environment for bacteria to grow and it may lead to oral health problems such as gingivitis. And the next one is mouth breathing. Well, in mouth breathing, we directly inhale the unfiltered air and this may dry out the gums and tissues and it leads to change in the nature of bacteria. So that can lead to the tooth decay. Also, drugs and medicines can cause gingivitis. Some drugs such causes gingival enlargement and that may lead to gingivitis drugs such as immunosuppressant drugs like cyclosporine trachrolimus they suppress our immunity and it may lead to the opportunistic infection and the gingivitis is one of them so it so it may lead to the gingivitis also other drugs such as nifedipine amlodipine can also lead to the gingivitis and the next one is nutritional deficiencies so when we have nutritional deficiencies such as vitamin b vitamin c it weakens our gums and it may lead to gingivitis and also in pregnancy there there is a chance of gingivitis because in pregnancy there is always change in hormones and also females are in a lot of stress and they may lead to gingivitis also diabetes mellitus in diabetes mellitus the sugar level is increasing, increased and this provides suitable temperature for bacteria to grow. As bacteria increases and they may lead to the damage of gingiva and gingivitis, causes gingivitis. So let's see the clinical features of gingivitis. Well, acute gingivitis is usually painful with sudden onset. So that's the acute gingivitis which occurs suddenly and it is usually painful and also it lasts for short duration and there is a bleeding on tooth brushing so when you brush your teeth there is a tooth there is a bleeding from your gums so this is the sign and symptoms of gingivitis also there is a reddening of tooth so the gums near the tooth are red than other areas and there is a loss of gingival stippling so in the picture you can see the gingiva and there are so many dot dots like structure on the gingiva so these are these are called gingival stippling it's like same structure you can also find it on the orange peel you can find the dot dot structure all over the orange peel so similar structure is present on on the healthy gingiva so when there is gingivitis these dot structure are disappeared so it becomes smooth and clear so there is a loss of gingival stippling and roll out margin so it means 
The gingiva are enlarged and it looks like a ring on the tooth. And also there is a bleeding on probing. So when you take the probe dental instrument and poke slowly, you can feel the bleeding from the gums. And there may be gingival recession. So in gingivitis, the level of gingiva is decreased like in here. So this is the healthy gingiva, but in gingivitis, the gingiva level decrease and come up to here and there is a more exposure to of tooth surfaces. So this is the ideal picture of gingivitis. So here are all the signs and symptoms of gingivitis. So acute gingivitis is usually occurred suddenly and it's painful and it usually lasts for short duration, maybe a week or two weeks. So there is a bleeding on tooth brushing. Yeah, because the gums are inflamed and swollen. So when you brush them, there's a high chance of bleeding. And the, there's a reddening of gingiva. As you can see in the picture, the gingiva are red here, here, everywhere. Also, there's a loss of gingival stiplings. As you can see in the picture, the gingiva are, are smooth. And there's a loss of gingival stiplings. The dot dot structure, like on the orange peel, are lost. So this is the orange peel. As you can see dot dot structure on the healthy gingiva but on the inflamed gingiva such dot structure are lost and it becomes smooth and also there is a roll out margin so the gingiva are enlarged and it looks like ring on the tooth so as you can see this structure look like ring on the tooth so this is called roll out margin and also there is a gingival recession as you can see uh, in this teeth, uh, the gingiva level has decre decreased. So normally it was supposed to be up to here, but gingiva level has gone far up to here and there is a gingival recession. Also here, normally it would be up to here somewhere. So this, this is the gingival recession. So let's see the histological features of gingivitis. Well, in acute gingivitis, there is an inflammation of acute inflammatory cells like neutrophils, macrophages. So when you see in the microscope, you can see the neutrophils, macrophages. So in chronic gingivitis, there is an infiltration of chronic inflammatory cells like lymphocyte, monocyte, plasma cells. So when acute inflammation become last for longer duration, they become chronic. So in chronic inflammation, there is an infiltration of cells such as lymphocytes, monocytes, and plasma cells. Also, capillaries are engorged and increase in number. That's why they become swollen. And there is a hyperemia, edema, and hemorrhage. So the blood vessel on the gingiva is increased. And also there is a edema, the gingiva is swollen, and there's a high chance of bleeding. The next one is the treatment. So the first treatment is the removal of irritants. So whatever irritants that is causing gingivitis, it should be removed. As we know, microorganism and calculus causes gingivitis, so it can be removed with the help of scaling. So just visit your dentist and do scaling. And also, we know some drugs can cause gingivitis. So when such drug leads to gingivitis, we can stop for some time by consulting with the physician. And also, we know nutritional deficiencies can lead to gingivitis and it can be corrected by taking the supplement vitamin B, vitamin C. Also, diabetes mellitus should be controlled. And we can also use plaque control stuff like toothbrush, interdental brush, floss. This helps to keep the mouth clean. And also, we can use mouthwash such as chlorhexidine, listerine. These mouthwash act as an antiseptic and helps to clean, keep the mouth clean. And if there is a poor response to the local therapy, such, such as mentioned above, we need to look for the systemic disease because sometimes systemic disease can also lead to gingivitis.